So this video is intended to follow the video on furosemide. So in this video we're going to talk about spironolactone, which is another diuretic. So I didn't actually use the word diuretic in the video on furosemide, but furosemide is a diuretic. A diuretic is one of these drugs which stimulates the kidneys to excrete more water in the form of urine. So in the video on furosemide we talked about how such drugs are useful in medicine in treating fluid overload secondary to cardiac problems, which is called heart failure. Furosemide is the first line choice of diuretic, but uh, if that is failing to get on top of things, spironolactone is added in as an adjunctive drug therapy. So the starting dose of furosemide would normally be 40 milligrams, one 40 milligram tablet once daily. And we give that dose normally in the morning because if we were to give it right before someone goes to bed, remember the drug works by stimulating the kidneys to excrete more water into the urine and therefore it's going to make you pee a lot. So you don't want to give it right before someone goes to bed because then they're going to be up all night having to pee. So we usually give it first thing in the morning. If that dose fails to get the fluid overload under control, then we would up the dose to 40 milligrams twice daily, so one tablet twice a day, and we'd normally give the first tablet first thing in the morning and the second tablet around lunchtime again because we're trying to avoid giving it uh, in the evening. If that then doesn't work, we then, rather than raise the dose of furosemide further, we tend to add in another diuretic, and that would be spironolactone. So we'd go to, we'd continue the 40 milligrams of furosemide twice daily, but then we'd add alongside that 25 milligrams of spironolactone. And again, we'd give the spironolactone tablet first thing in the morning. Furosemide and spironolactone is quite a good combination. They're very, very effective at stimulating the kidneys to excrete a huge amount of water when given together. In addition, spironolactone counteracts one of the major side effects of furosemide, which is something called hypokalemia. So furosemide stimulates the kidneys to excrete a huge amount of water into the urine, but it also stimulates the kidneys to excrete electrolytes um, overactively as well. So when you take furosemide, one of the big risks is that your electrolytes can become deranged. In particular, potassium is the one that we worry about. So furosemide stimulates the kidneys to get rid of more potassium than they would normally get rid of. And therefore, you can end up with too low potassium level within your blood. And this is called hypokalemia. And that is dangerous because derangements in potassium level within the blood can cause abnormalities of the electrical activity of the heart, leading to cardiac arrhythmias, which could potentially be fatal. So hypo hypokalemia is dangerous. Now, the reason that spironolactone is good then to give alongside furosemide, especially when we're starting to use larger doses of furosemide, such as 40 milligrams twice a day, a day, is because spironolactone as a diuretic actually is potassium sparing. It actually reduces the amount of potassium that the kidneys get rid of. So it counteracts the effect of furosemide, which is pro-getting rid of potassium. Spironolactone is anti-getting rid of potassium. It causes the kidneys to hold on to potassium and secrete less. So if you give them together, it they counteract one another and hopefully the potassium level will remain normal. So in conclusion then, both furosemide and spironolactone are diuretics. They stimulate the kidneys to get rid of water and they are used to treat fluid overload due to problems with the heart, which is what we call heart failure. Furosemide would be the first line one, initially at a dose of 40 milligrams once a day, but then we would raise the dose to 40 milligrams twice a day. If that's failing to get on top of the fluid overload, then we would, rather than raise the dose of furosemide even further, which you can do, but you are putting the patient at more ever-increasing risk of hypokalemia if you do that. Instead, what you can do is add in another drug, spironolactone, uh, as an adjunctive therapy, and this has the beneficial effect that it will counteract the hypokalemia promoting effect of furosemide and together furosemide and spironolactone are incredibly effective at stimulating water excretion by the kidneys. The final thing to be aware of with spironolactone is that it does have anti-androgen properties. It blocks the effect of testosterone and other androgens within the body. Now in order to get 
significant antiandrogen effects, you have to give it in a higher dose. And indeed, in certain situations, spironolactone is actually given rather than for its diuretic effect, it's given specifically for its antiandrogen effect. So, for example, in certain countries, spironolactone can be given to girls for acne because acne is driven by androgens stimulating the sebaceous glands of the skin. So blocking the effect of the androgens can have a profound anti-acne effect. Uh, and in that case, it would be given in a dose higher than it's given in this context. So it would be given in a dose such as 100 milligrams. It's also sometimes used in male to female transsexuals to uh, block the androgen effect and to help feminize them. Again, in this context, it would be given in much higher doses, either 100 milligrams or maybe even higher, 200 milligrams a day, possibly. However, those uses are rarer. The main use of spironolactone is as a diuretic, and for that use, we use it in this lower dose of 25 milligrams once a day as an adjunct to furosemide. But be aware that when you put male patients on this drug, even at these lower doses, it may have antiandrogen effects. So things that you should be looking out for are reductions in body hair, potentially a uh, reduction in the size of the external genitalia, and then uh, potentially breast development. All of these would be potentially things that would upset the patient and might be a reason that it would have to be stopped.